Well, for more now on U.S. politics and the state of the economy, let's bring in our panel. Joining us from Los Angeles is Jesse Lee Peterson. He's an author, activist, pastor, and host of the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show. Also with us from New York is Christopher Hahn. He's the host of the Aggressive Progressive podcast on iHeartRadio and Apple Podcasts. And from Massachusetts, John Quelch is the dean of the University of Miami's Herbert Business School. Thanks to all of you for being with us. John Cross, let me start with you. And we just Thank had you. that very distressing news from our reporter there, Nathan King, telling us that uh, Congress people have gone home without reaching agreement on this stimulus bill. There is something of a Band-Aid solution. They've extended the benefits for a week. But if there's no other solution uh, to give people this kind of benefit that they were getting, what kind of impact is that going to have, not just on families, but also on the U.S. economy? Anand, it's uh, going to have a big impact. Um, uh, thank you for having me this evening. Um, we have to understand that uh, everything was going pretty well uh, for a couple of months, but then the patient had a relapse, and uh, the patient was essentially released from hospital too early. Uh, and therefore, the last couple of weeks, we've seen an uptick in the uh, continuing unemployment insurance claims. Uh, we've seen year-on-year uh, -year credit card spending that had been creeping back up uh, now stalled out. And uh, we've seen consumer confidence that was up in July, down in June. Uh, and so throughout the economy, there is a measure of uh, pessimism, and that can only be magnified by uh, the impasse in Congress, uh, because it's clear that uh, 30 million, as uh, the report indicated, 30 million uh, consumers and households are hurting. Uh, they do need uh, the supplemental uh, employment benefit, maybe not at 600 uh, per person uh, for everybody, uh, but they also need a continuing uh, moratorium on uh, evictions from uh, rental accommodations as well. Right. And uh, this impasse is simply not good enough. Uh, John, one other question. We've just had another 1.4 mil uh, uh, million Americans file for unemployment. We also got the news this week that the country saw its biggest quarterly post-war contra uh, contraction in um, and, and yet, you know, we also see the stock market continuing to climb. So what's the longer term outlook for the economy? Right. Uh, so important to note the 33 uh, percent uh, quarterly reduction, uh, four times higher than the largest quarterly reduction during the 2008 uh, financial crisis. Um, and by comparison, during the same quarter, it's worth pointing out that a, another very large economy, Germany, had a 10% uh, year on year reduction. Uh, meanwhile, actually, the Chinese economy uh, rebounded 3.2% uh, uh, year on year. Uh, and so the magnitude of the problem in the United States in the second quarter is really substantial. I think a lot of, uh, a lot of investors, a lot of uh, institutions were counting on a V-shaped recovery and a huge rebound in the third quarter. But Goldman Sachs and many others are having to scramble to revise downward their projections for a recovery and a rebound uh, in the third quarter. So. Certainly for the rest of this year, I think it looks as though the U.S. is going to underperform what the uh, experts forecast uh, a month or two ago. Uh, and uh, the question is whether or not the vaccine is going to come along fast enough to greatly boost consumer confidence and get everybody back on track in 2021. Uh, Chris Hahn, we see this becoming another political football right now, the fighting that's going on between the Democrats and the Republicans on Congress. Would it be fair to say that in this instance, with the Congress people now packing their bags, going away on vacation, they've actually failed. Both Democrats and Republicans have actually failed the American people again. Well, the Senate surely failed. The House of Representatives passed the bill 70 days ago. The Senate refused to act on it till this week. And they can't even get their majority in line. There are over 20 Republicans that have told Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Senate Republicans, that they will not vote for this or any other relief bill. So that leaves it to Democrats in the Senate. And if you're leaving it to Democrats in the Senate, you really need to start with the House of Representatives bill, not some fantasy bill being floated by the White House. The White House has failed to lead on this. 
Uh, America has failed to lead the world on this crisis, and we are seeing the effects of that. So, no, I would not pass the blame around equally. The House of Representatives did their job. They passed a bill 70 days ago. The Senate has done nothing. Mitch McConnell is not a leader. He's just some guy who likes to play politics, and now is not a time for that. Now is a time for leadership. All right, Jesse Lee Peterson, what is your view on this? Welcome to the show, by the way. I mean, what is your reading of the situation right now? I think that all people know, all honest people know, that the coronavirus is not as serious as the children of the lie are pretending. The children of the lie are the liberal media, the Democratic Party, the right or Republicans, the never Trumpers, and the black race hustlers. They are holding the people in captivity because they want the great white hope out of office. And I call Donald Trump, our president, the great white hope. This is a political issue, and it's about getting rid of Donald Trump. These people are liars. The, the situation is not as bad as they're pretending. They don't want the economy to recover. They don't want the people to go back to work because they want to blame Donald Trump. All right, they have but election Jesse, coming. Yeah. They, have they have election coming up, and they don't want to do it. We just saw a terrorist attack upon America by this far-left radical yeah. Black Lives okay. Matter and we and Antifa. Okay. And those people, they ran around this is the problem the building, with this country. destroying. We got guys like this. Let me finish. All right. Uh, one, one moment. No, uh, no, one moment, Chris. Let, let him finish. Let, let me finish. finish. Hold on, buddy. And they went around destroying America, All right. killing people, robbing and raping. Yeah. They had no mask on, no problem. The coronavirus discussion died down. And as soon as the attack on Jesse, let me ask you this. America okay, Jesse, died let me, let, down. Now yeah. they're talking Jesse, about the coronavirus. Jesse, let me ask you this. How can you say that the coronavirus pandemic is not as serious as the media? Media makes it out to be when we have 150,000 people dead and 4.5 million people infected in the United States. Well, what you have to realize is that hospitals get money for lying about the coronavirus situation. Oh no, 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 no. So <laughs> most people that go into hospitals today, they can guy. go in for cancer, they can go in for other things. All right, these, these and are the hospitals yeah. are lying and saying that, oh, they died from coronavirus. All right, Jesse, these, these, are, these are verified numbers. True. Hold on, hold on, sir. Yeah. You're so, not allowed to interrupt me. Hold on. Yeah. I didn't interrupt you. Hold on. And so. So the I hospitals wasn't. are lying about these stats, about these numbers. This is about getting rid of Donald Trump. Yeah. It's not about the people. The people, the no. politicians okay. would allow the people okay, to fine. suffer right. in order to get rid of Donald Trump. Yeah. That's what this is all about. All right, Chris, a quick response from you, and then I'm going to move on. Yeah, you want to know what the problem in America is right now, is that one party is captured by people like Jesse. So when we talk That's about what's true. going on, on in I'm D.C., the wait, truth. one moment, we, Jesse, you let, are, we want to talk about, you are we want to talk about what's
much. You are we want right. to talk about you're what's going on. Them. Okay, you're Jesse, one of them. Okay, Jesse, let Chris and Jesse shut up. Trust it. Okay, you're one Just of them, up. and you cannot be. Trusted. You are a foolish you human being who is a you disgrace to this country. You and are we a liar. Have, we have a situation in this country Jason that is severe, is and you are making Jason things up daddy. because Jason you know nothing. You, are you do nothing. You cannot even. Okay, okay Jesse. Get rid of you want to know what's wrong with with America? You are it's you. Trying it's to people like people. you no, who support this like president. You. Lie, okay. it's people like you and the Democratic Party. I have got to move on. Okay, I've got to move on. Let me bring in John Crouch. John, um, let's look at the uh, situation as far as the economy is concerned. I mean, the country is now caught, as we can see, between a pandemic and there is also uh, an urge. You hear it around the country to reopen the economy. Um, one is causing a problem with the other. Can the country actually do both? Well, many people have uh, articulated a trade-off between uh, public health and the economy, and that is really a false dichotomy, as I think uh, uh, Tony Fauci and many others have said. Um, you, have to have, you have to have good public health security in order to have good economic security. At the same time, it's clear that there are very significant costs to delaying reopening. Uh, just take uh, the uh, arena of mental health, for example. Um, many families are in uh, confined spaces, they're on top of each other, and all sorts of problems are arising uh, as a result of that in terms of the learning quality that students can uh, undertake in home learning. Uh, as well as uh, uh, other family members being, uh, you know, in confined spaces with each other. So with this yeah. mental health type problem, I'll there's an imperative to do everything we can to get back into right. classrooms and to reopen. But we can't do it if the statistics are working against us. And at the moment, in many states, the statistics are working against uh, the legitimate scientific basis for reopening uh, the economy. And that is why we have had to retrench. Uh, and that's going to cost the U.S. economy a tremendous amount of yep. money. Not getting it right the first time is going to cost yep. taxpayers for years to come. Okay. Uh, Chris Hahn, I want to move on to another development this week, and that is the president floating the idea of postponing the election because conditions would not... Uh, lead to a fair and a free election and a transparent election. What do you make of what he had to say? I mean, that's what a loser would say when he's losing, right? Let's not play the game. Uh, the United States Constitution, the laws of the United States will not allow the election to be postponed past November 3rd. And if there, for some reason, is no election on November 3rd, or if the president somehow holds up the results in court past January 20th at 1201, he will cease to be president because the 20th Amendment of the United States Constitution says that his term ends at 12 o'clock and the new term begins at 1201. And if there's a vacancy at 1201, then the House of Representatives, the Speaker of the House, will become president of the United States at that time. So, look, we didn't fight all the wars we fought around this world for 240 years, preserving the United States Republic and our Constitution and our values, to allow a person like Donald Trump to steal an election or to say that our democracy is less than other parts of the world. We believe yeah. in the vote in this country. There is no evidence to support anything that the president said, and his failure to lead 
which, which the good professor just talked about here, about our economy and us not having a real strategy to, yeah. to fight the, uh, the virus, is why he's in the predicament he's in right now. He had an opportunity in March to take the round, to take the, to, to take the lead on this, yeah. to fight this virus and to, and to tamp down on it. Instead, he promoted conspiracy theories. He tried to deny it was even here. Right. And now, you know, he's living with the consequences. All right, Jesse Lee Peterson, what is your response to what you've just heard? First of all, the president took action early on, and when he banned travel from China and parts of Europe, these same radical far-left lying Democrats call him a racist. Even Nancy Pelosi went down to Chinatown, you know, pressing around with the, with the Chinese people, oh, no problem, no problem. And then as soon as he decided to do something else, they went against him. Everything that this president does, they are against it because they are liars, and what they want is power and wealth. That's what they want, and the president is in the way of the, uh, in their way of getting control of the people and getting finance for themselves. And this idea of possibly not holding the election in November, I like that idea because the Democrats are desperate. Of course, they, they want do. power and wealth. And wealth. Yeah, they are far left radical. They are so far left now; they have fallen off the edge, and so they Jesse. want to control the people. And the Democrats cannot be trusted <laughs> at all. Jesse, if Why do we have to do Hold that, on, Jesse? Beta, so, so wait, why don't you Okay, one minute, Chris. Because you're, con so you're conflicting. Why are you always interrupting, man? Don't interrupt me. I didn't interrupt you. Because you're and a so lying fool, and I don't and want the all, people of the world to hear you. I don't need you. you to interrupt me, Mr. Beta Mail. Hold on. The president... Yeah, oh, you it, think I'm the Beta Mail? Come on out here. Hold on, Beta Mail. <laughs> The president and, and Come out all right, of us, we'll see who's a beta we man. Okay. We, hold on, man. We know that the Democrats Very quickly, Jesse. Yeah, i got to go. They have tried before to steal the election, and that's what they want to do this time around. They want the president out. Right. And the president right. has more support than what the liberal media and these liars want you to know. Okay, and that's where we are going to have to leave it. Thanks to all of you for being with us.